Praise be Jesus Christ. I want to read a quote to you that I just uh, read in the book Dune, which I'm finally reading after seeing the first installment of the movie, which was amazing. We digress. Uh, the quote is, The price we paid was the price men have always paid for achieving a paradise in this life. We went soft. We lost our edge. The price we paid was the price men have always paid for achieving a paradise in this life. We went soft. We lost our edge our edge you know maybe that's why jesus christ says that uh, it is so difficult for the rich to go to heaven and that the first beatitude is blessed are the poor for theirs is the kingdom of heaven that poverty in itself is the greatest gift suffering is the greatest gift because it re attunes us to eternal life we stop looking for this world to be our end to be our comfort and we lift our eyes to the kingdom of heaven and then what that does is it changes our will we start living for eternity remember the the definition of love and worship is the same who do i worship who do i love it is the one who controls my will and if all my riches are on this earth and if my community that gives me my place my sense of comfort, my consolation, my sense of identity is on this earth, then they will be the ones I love and they will be the ones whose will I do. And as we're preparing for Pentecost this next Sunday, uh, it's really beautiful because so many of the readings are asking the Holy Spirit in the, the prayers at the Mass that He would transform our minds to seek heavenly things and that He would inflame our wills to love eternity and that that is the greatest danger that we have on this earth is that we stop thinking about heaven and we start looking for our paradise here and now and that is really the essence of satanism we need to understand this is satanism is trying to build our paradise in exile away from god and that's why the essence of Satanism is do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Satan himself meaning non serviam, I will not serve. You know, when we talk about political parties, which is not something I'm too keen to do because it's not my forte, it's not my interest, but politics and religion always go hand in hand because we take our religious ideals and we apply them to the political sphere. And one thing that we need to understand is that liberalism, which is the dominating political sphere of, our, of the United States, the essence of liberalism is the ego, is doing our own will, self-fulfillment. And that is the greatest danger that we have to the salvation of our souls. That rather than seeking the will of God, so that we can go to heaven we seek to do our own will to do the will of the community so that we have paradise on earth that's the great struggle that we all face and the reason i thought about this was because of catholic biden's comments at the beginning of lgbt month of june he says i want to quote what he says he says look our presence here this afternoon makes a simple strong statement Pride is back at the White House, which was followed by great applause. He says, for this community and for our nation and for the world, Pride Month represents so much. It stands for courage, the courage of all those in previous generations and today who proudly live their truth. It stands for justice, both the steps we've taken and the steps we need to take. And above all, Pride Month stands for love, being able to love yourself, love whomever you love, and love this country even to make it more fair and more free and more just. It's just so fascinating that courage now in this, uh, in this vision is to stand for our own truth, to live their truth. And yet that is the exact opposite of Christianity, which is we are not called to live our own truth, but to live the truth that has been revealed to us in Jesus Christ. And that's the great battle that we have, right? To live the revelation of Jesus Christ or to live our own truth. 
and does not take courage. And that, that's really where the devil is so insidious in all this, is that he makes us believe that to be authentic, we need to live our own truth. Yet we do not on ourselves possess truth because truth is a person. And we cannot understand who we are, our deepest desires, and our destiny on our own. We need the revelation of God. We need salvation. That's what it means to be saved by Jesus Christ, is I've encountered the truth that he has brought us from heaven, and I conform myself to him so as to discover my identity and discover my destiny in heaven. So I conform my will to that. That's true courage. He goes on um, for justice. He talks about the justice that we need to build for the LGBT community. True justice is giving to God his due. It's man living in right order, the creature, creature, creature to the creator. True justice is humility, is knowing who I am as a creature of God, a beloved son and daughter of God. And yet I can choose to rebel against that. I can offer the ultimate injustice of deciding to serve myself, to obey my own will rather than to obey God. And lastly, um, when he speaks about Pride Month standing for love, being able to love yourself, love whomever you love and love this country to make it more fair, more just. All the essence of sin is loving inordinately loving what should not be loved or loving it too much because the first commandment is love the lord your god with all your heart all your mind and all your strength and have no other god before him it's our love that determines our our identity and our destiny and the essence of sin is always to love what should not be loved or into the degree that it should not be loved True love in justice is loving God above all things and conforming myself to his will. And it's for this reason that we are going to ask for the Holy Spirit to come upon us at Pentecost. The other thing that I want to note is that in this week of preparation for Pentecost, there's constant looks at the martyrs. The readings are about martyrdom. Christ promising, you will be my witnesses over all the world. And witness in Greek is martyr. You will be my martyrs. Why? Because the world cannot accept the truth that I give you, that the Holy Spirit will instill in your own flesh. And Jesus said, they will hate you because I have chosen you out of the world. We do not belong to this world. And what makes us belong to this world is their truth. Every time I am silent or I go along with the truths, quote unquote, of this world to get along with this community, where I deny the truths of Jesus Christ, that is sin. I am betraying our Lord when I deny the truths of Scripture, of Revelation, in order to fit in to this community. Because we do not belong to this world because the truth draws us out of the world. It sanctifies us. Christ says, I will sanctify you with the truth. And the Holy Spirit is the one who is the power that enables us to live faithful to the truth of the gospel. So if you're afraid to stand apart in this month of June to say, I am not going along with the pride month and I'm not going to confirm any of my brothers and sisters in sinful activity that can damn their souls to hell for all eternity, which is the farthest thing from love. If you're afraid to stand apart as a Catholic, as a follower of Jesus Christ this month, pray to the Holy Spirit for true courage, for true love, for true justice. Courage to stand true in the faith. Love to love God above all, all persons and all things, even my own flesh. And justice to truly honor God before all else, before honoring man. It is it is more readily acceptable to obey God rather than men. That's what we need to think about this month. We do not belong to this world. We do not belong to a political party. We belong to the truth incarnate, love incarnate Jesus Christ. And we cannot be ashamed or afraid to stand for that truth this month. That's the only thing that we should take pride in.
to stand with Jesus Christ or to fall with this world.